So, the first thing we have is the Philosopher's Stone. This is an item that is crafted with a diamond, four glowstone, four redstone dust, and it can be in any pattern as long as it is alternating. This can be used as a portable crafting table by hitting C, and can be used in some crafting recipes, some of which involve the transmutation of items such as four iron to an ender pearl, eight iron to a gold, four gold to a diamond, one di two di well, two diamonds to an emerald, and one emerald to two diamonds. As well, as you may have saw in a brief second, one diamond to four gold, one gold to eight iron. However, you cannot do the reverse for the ender pearl. You cannot turn one ender pearl into four iron ingots. Additionally, you can use this tool to transmute things in the world. And th some blocks have different functions depending on your if you're holding shift or not. So what you do is you would right click it and you'll see what block is being selected with the little white um, overlay. So for stone, you can turn it into cobblestone or into grass by holding shift. Oh no. You can turn cobblestone into stone or grass. You can turn grass into sand or cobblestone. You can turn dirt into sand or, co or a grass block. I need to get back to that. Um, then you can cycle through the different types of secondary stone like granite, diorite, and indesite, and you can hold shift to reverse the cycle. You can turn sand into grass or into cobblestone, gravel into sandstone, sandstone into gravel, ice into water, water into ice, you just have to make sure you're holding shift so it'll select it, uh, obsidian into lava lava into obsidian pumpkins into melons melons into pumpkins you can cycle through all of the different wood types for both the log stripped log um full bark log stripped bark log and then all of the leaf types at least it says however unfortunately it does not seem to be working at the moment that is most likely a bug you can then cycle you're supposed to also be able to cycle through the sapling types again this may be a bug at the moment you can then cycle through all the different wood types here, as, and then you can cycle through the different colors on wool, terracotta, concrete powder, concrete glass, and glass panes. You can then turn soul sand into soul soil and back, netherrack into any of the nilliums, you'd hold shift to turn the nilliums into netherrack. You can cycle through the mushroom types, wood types, and... Um, yeah, basically the nether wood types, anything that's crimson, can be turned into anything that is warped. And it doesn't matter what it is, it can be, you know, the fences, the planks, the logs, the, the, the mushroom blocks, all of that can just be turned from one to the other. And, lastly, there is mob transmutation. So, you can take any mob and transmute it into another random mob by hitting R. The mob that is transmuted is usually random, and so it could be anything. You can also just hold the button down, and as you can probably hear, it is very, very loud, but it leaves a weird trail, and so, you know, I think that's pretty fun. And one last thing I forgot to mention about the Philosopher's Stone is that is that it has a few different modes. Now, you can hit G to switch between the modes, and if you notice, um, right now it doesn't show to do anything. However, if you hit V to charge up the item, you'll notice that the range of transmutation increases. And then you'll notice that the modes do different things. So we have cube mode, which will turn a 9 by 9 by 9 cubic area. So if there was stuff above it, above this, or below this plane, then that would also get transmuted. Panel mode, where it only transmutes the flat surface that it is on, and then line mode, where it will only transmute a single line. So it's essentially three dimensions, two dimensions, one dimension. And lastly, with the Philosopher's Stone, I do want to mention that the ability to turn any mob into any other mob does not work 
if you are in survival mode. I do not know if this is a bug or a feature, but it just doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I've, I've tried. It doesn't work. I don't know what's. I don't know why. Next, we have the transmutation table. So this is crafted with the philosopher's stone, any type of stone, including the andesite, diorite, or granite, as well as the polished versions and four obsidian. Now, you will get the Philosopher's Stone back after crafting this, so you don't need to worry about making another one. What the table does is, when you right-click it, it allows you to put items into it, and then turn them into any other item that you've learned in the table. So, for example, if I was to put all of this stuff in there, there is now a lot of energy mass in there, which can be seen by the little number underneath it. So let's say I put all these items in there, and let's say that I really, really want some netherite ingots. What I could do is go and get one, put it in there, and then because I have all of this mass, I can pull out a lot more. So, when using this mod, I do recommend that anytime you find something new that you might need more of in the future, just go ahead and put it in the table, so that way you can pull out as much as you need later on. And then we have the transmutation tablet, which is crafted with the transmutation table. Any type of stone, again, same, t just anything that has, you know, the idea of stone. And then four dark matter blocks that will be covered later. The transmutation tablet is basically the same as the transmutation table. And it will save everything that you've learned in the table to the tablet, except it can be done on the go. Additionally, through some multiplayer testing, I have learned that the transmutation table does not work, or rather it works similarly to an inner chest in that other players cannot access your EMC or your learned items. It is different for each player. Next up, we have the concept called Power Flowers, which are a way of producing EMC from nothing in the, the most compact and efficient way possible. So we're going to start out by telling you guys about the energy collectors, condensers, and antimatter relays. The energy collectors are crafted with a block of diamond, a furnace, and some glowstone and glass, and then can be upgraded using glowstone and dark matter, and then red matter. The energy collectors at any um, version will basically will basically at different rates, as you can see, gather up EMC from sunlight. Now that's just kind of the um, description, but it doesn't actually need to be in sunlight for it to work. And then what you can do is you can take an item that is in a certain cycle. So if you were to look at the uses of it here, you can see the cycle. And it will go from charcoal to redstone, redstone to coal, coal to gunpowder, gunpowder to glowstone, glowstone to alchemical coal, chemical coal to block of redstone, to blaze powder, to blocks of coal, to glowstone, to mobius fuel, to alchemical coal block, to a eternalist fuel, which goes to mobius fuel block to eternalist fuel block. And it will cycle through those, essentially generating EMC making the items more and more valuable when it comes to the transmutation table. And you can see the difference with the mark with the version 3 having 20, 2300, the version 2 having around 700, and the version 1 having around 200. So, next up now we have the energy condensers. These are made with an alchemical chest, which is a diamond, different covalence dusts, some stone, some iron, and a chest. And as well as some diamonds and some obsidian, the version 2 is made with the energy condenser, dark and red matter blocks, and what these will do is they will take EMC from an energy collector and use it to produce a certain item. So for example, let's say you need a very large amount of golden carrots. You can put it in there, and it won't actually use any of its EMC value up, and it will begin to take some EMC from this, and we'll use it to make more. So just to, I'm just going to put a few more around there, just so to have it be shown a little faster. And the golden carrots will then be produced constantly. 
which will allow you to produce an infinite amount of the same item without having to constantly input and output EMC from a transmutation table or tablet. Next up is the antimatter relays. These are made with a block of diamond, glass, and obsidian and can be upgraded using obsidian and dark matter and then red matter. What these do is they act as a bit of a in-between between the collectors and the condensers and items can be put into them in order to have them essentially turned directly into EMC to be fed into the condensers. And now on to the overall concept of a power flower. So now for this, I'm going to be using the highest um, versions of each thing. And to show the speed of it, I'm going to be using a diamond to be produced. So what you're going to want to start with is you're going to want to start with an energy condenser of any type around two blocks off the ground. Or just two blocks above the base of wherever you are building it. You're then going to want to put antimatter relays on every single side except for one, which will be where you will be, you know, looking into it or um, removing stuff from it. And then afterwards, you will then place energy collectors on every possible surface of the antimatter relays. Oops, I keep not holding shift. And what this will and it should look something like this. Now it doesn't matter which face is available to be seen as long as you have at least one. So as you can see there's nothing in there yet, but if I put a diamond in there, you can see that it is producing diamonds very, very quickly. The two that were produced were from stored while I was assembling it. But as you can see, that's very, very quick to just produce a diamond. And I know what you're thinking, what what about other items? Well, we have netherite here, but I'm going to go one step further and show you guys how fast netherite blocks would be produced. So, so let's I'm going to time lapse it or just show the time because this takes a very long time, but still it's a full netherite block. So, I, I, okay, I'm not going to show that. i am cut that out. And so, yeah, that's that's how fast that this machine, this simple setup can produce um, diamonds. Now, obviously, it would take a very, very long time to assemble this, seeing as you would need to have a lot of EMC anyways. So I do recommend starting out with the Mark I relays and um, condenser. Next up, we're on to some of the raw materials. So first, we have alchemical coal, Mobius fuel, and Eternalis fuel. A if anyone knows how to properly pronounce that, please tell me in the comments. I'm pretty sure it's Eternalis, but I might be wrong. And these are crafted with basically four of the previous fuel so to get alchemical coal it's four coal to get a mobius fuel it's four alchemical coal and to get an eternalist fuel it's four mobius fuel and each of these smelt 32 128 and 512 items respectively and these are also something that is recommended to basically be used in the um, energy condensers to basically produce EMC, seeing as they, you know, have relative, some of them have low EMC, they're, they're at about a mi good midpoint where they can be used to generate it. If you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? Next up, we have the three types of covalence dust. These are crap. The first one is crafted with charcoal and any type of cobblestone. You get 40. The second one is crafted with iron ingot and redstone dust. Again, 40. And high covalence dust made with the diamond and coal, again, you get 40. And these are used in crafting um, the alchemical bags, alchemical chests, divining rods, and repair talismans. Next up, we have dark and red matter. 
So Dark Mitre is crafted with a block of diamond surrounded by Eternalist Fuel. And to make Red Matter, you take 3 Dark Matter and 6 Eternalist Fuel. And these are used for making armor, some like rings and things like that, as well as tools. Finally, we have the Klein Stars. There are six different tiers of Klein Star. The first tier is made with a diamond surrounded by Mobius fuel, and to make the next tier, you just combine four of them. And these are used to charge up, or as fuel in certain, um, you know, tools, as well as just as a way to compress EMC. Additionally, the final Omega Klein Star is used to make the highest tier of armor. And of course, there is Alchemical Coal, Mobius Fuel, Eternalist Fuel, Dark Matter, and Red Matter blocks. So next up, we have all of the tools. So first off, we have the Dark Matter tools. These are all crafted how you'd expect. Um, the hammer is just three diamonds and two Dark Matter. Um, and for all the others, it's just Dark Matter where the material is, and diamonds instead of six. And... The Dark Matter pickaxe is the only one that actually has any type of special ability. And that is the ability to mine either three a um, one by three up and down, a one by three side to side, one or a one by three going um, forwards facing. So if I was go to throw mode and set it into three by three tall shot, it will break. Those three blocks, as you can see there, I'm just going to pick those up, place them back. Then we have the wide shot, which will break things like that. Um, that was already broken. And then we have the long shot, which I guess, okay, there's no, there was no stone there. Um, but it, 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 it'll break three long lengthwise. Now with the red matter tools... Um, they're basically the same, except there are a few extra things, which are the Qatar and Morning Star. And I'm just going to say that the hammer is basically like a super fast breaking uh, stone tool. And so first we have the red Qatar. This functions as a sword, an axe, shears, and a hoe all at once. So it can, you know, like get leaves and stuff like that. It can be used as a hoe break down logs, and kill things, and you can switch between slaying all and slaying hostile. However, um, there really doesn't seem to be much of a difference. It appears to just kill everything really, really quickly, no matter what mode it's in. Next, we have the Morning Star. This is a mixture between a shovel, pickaxe, and hammer, and, does the, and the different modes do the exact same thing as the Dark Matter pickaxe, and the red matter pickaxe but it just oh wait hold on i'm still in creative and it breaks blocks extremely quickly if i was to get down to so if i was to get to stone or dirt you can see this is with no haste nothing but the tool it basically insta breaks everything including dirt so yeah Tad bit overpowered, but when you look at the amount of EMC required, and that, then it, then you realize it's kind of balanced. So now we have the various armor sets. So the dark red and gem armor. So dark matter is um the only it's actually slightly worse than netherite um just because it has one less armor toughness per piece. The red matter boots. I would put on par with netherite, um, except that while I still have one less armor toughness, they each ha each piece has plus one knockback resistance. And then there's the gem armor, which you get an additional 0.5 knockback resistance when compared to the red matter armor. Still less armor toughness, but you can basically have step assist, which will allow you to walk up single blocks without having to hit the space bar, as well as doubling your speed. The gem helmet, which will give you infinite night vision. The gem chest plate, which makes you just completely immune to fire damage. So if I was to uh, get a um, lava bucket real quick.
yeah, immune to fire. Um, you also walk on lava. Like, you have, you have to shift to go into it. And then the gravity... Gre oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Uh, this allows you to fly. Yeah, did, did I forget to mention that? Anyway, then we have the uh, Gravity Greaves, which allow you to basically just jump infinitely. So if you double space, you fly. And then also with the Gravity Greaves, if you hold shift, you'll go down really fast. And you can walk on water. Uh, so yeah, if once you get this armor, which... I mean, ba look at, looking at the EMC and the EMC of the crafting components, it's going to take a while. But, I mean, you're basically invincible. Like, high skeleton. Wow, no damage. Wow. Wow, no damage. Here, you, you might need some help. Alright, so, right here we have around 15 charged creepers. I'm just going to hop in here. Um, yeah, 15 point-blank charged creeper explosions did nothing. That That's from a different mod. Um, that's not part of this mod. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, that was just basically me trying to prove a point. That is, and the point is that with this armor set, you basically become god. Like, y y you can't die. You can't die. I if you die with this armor set, you must have another mod installed that would probably do more damage. Like, like I don't know if, like... I don't know if there's ore spawn for any later versions of the game, but like it would, I I bet that even some of the things in ore spawn wouldn't be able to kill you with if you have this armor. It it's just so overpowered. It's 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 stupidly OP. Next up, we have the Archangel Smite. When activated, it will begin to shoot arrows at nearby mobs. As you can see, it does not target passive mobs, only hostile mobs. Next up, we have the Goddess Harvest Band. When put on a pedestal or in your inventory, it will accelerate the growth of nearby crops. As you saw there. Now, keep in mind, it works faster if the crops are hydrated, but it will not replant them automatically, but it will break them, which is nice. So yeah, that that was a relatively quick 5 wheat. Next we have the ignition ring, which causes any nearby mobs to spontaneously combust. This can be very, very useful for mob grinders. Oh, next we have the zero ring. This will freeze the surroundings. As you can see, snow is everywhere. And it will also put out mobs that are on fire. Next up, we have Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. This will strike any nearby mobs with lightning every three and a half seconds. So, you know, charge creeper farms, anyone? No, stay away from my cat. Next up, we have the Watch of Flowing Time. One thing I want to address before we start with this one is that um, when it says right-click to change mode, that does not do anything. Um, but you can turn it on or off by hitting G. And when it's on the pedestal, it basically increases the um, speed of any blocks that are not crops. It does not do anything to crops. But things like furnaces, it will. So, activate it. And boom. This is just a normal furnace, normal fuel, normal iron ore, and it smelted a lot quicker. Granted, it still smelled the same amount, but it was a lot faster than usual. Next, we have the Gem of Eternal Density, crafted with some diamonds, dark matter, and obsidian. And what this will do is it will condense items on the go, and it will condense them into either gold, you know, all the different types of matter, iron ingot. So... You know, iron, gold, diamond, dark matter, red matter. You can select what type of matter you want it to be condensed to. And then, let's say if you, let's say if you have, you want it to be diamonds, and you get a stack of iron. Activate it.
activate it, and boom. And you can just change between them. Now, if there's not enough material, then it will just wait until there is. So, if I was to get a stack of emeralds, stack of emeralds, there we go, it will then produce a bunch of dark matter. So, you know, boom. Dark matter galore. Switch it up again. Red matter, like, this is just useful if you want to, and you, it, it works with everything. So, and then, you know, to turn it off, you just get everything that hasn't been condensed yet. So this is very, very useful if you are, um, if you're just exploring, it's useful because then you can just, you know, condense items. You won't really need to have much, you, you can just use your entire inventory to prepare and just store everything in this. Next up we have the Void Ring. The Void Ring is made by, by combining the General Tornado Density and Black Hole Band, and it performs each of their functions, but it performs them separately. So, it will either condense items that you have in your inventory, or pull in items, but it won't do both. And I have a feeling this might be a bug, but I don't know. But, you know, it could be a bug. So next we have the Ring of Arcana. This is made by combining the Harvest Goddess Band, the Ignition Ring, the Zero Ring, and the Swift Wolf's Rending Gale with some red matter. And it performs the functions of all of them. So, you can swap between them. And, once active, it will perform each of their functions. So, swap to Zero Mode, the ground will begin to freeze. Ignition Mode, things will be set on fire. Harvest Mode, crops will begin to grow. And the, and the SWRG, which is you know, Swift Wolf's Rending Gale, mobs will get struck by lightning. And you don't even, and then, of course, you can shoot snowballs with zero mode. I hit the wrong button. Hold on. The Ring of Arcana, you can shoot fire. Harvest mode, there is no projectile. And in Swarg, you can strike lightning down. Oh no. I accidentally held the button down. Uh oh. I think the game may have just crashed. Alright, well, now that the game's rebooted, let me just say, uh, yeah, don't, don't spam lightning, that'll definitely not be a good idea. Anyway, now there's the body, soul, mind, and life stone, and these just say what they do, um, rest body stone restores hunger, soul stone restores hearts, mind stone sucks in XP, and the life stone is basically just the body and soul stone combined. Pretty simple, P pretty simple. Next we have the Evertide and Vulcanite Amulets. So this, is, I mean, these do what they say. Um, there's a few other things though. Um, so the pedestal will create rain snowstorms. This will prevent them. This will fire a water projectile, be an infinite water bucket, and will fill tanks and cauldrons and basically be free. Well this will basically just cost a little bit of EMC. Additionally, um, this allows you to walk on water, this allows you to walk on lava, and is immune to all types of fire damage. And now we have these various divining rods. So what these are used for is to basically check the EMC of a given area. So as an example, the first one will basically show the um, how many blocks and the average EMC for those blocks. The second one will show you the average EMC, as well as the thing that has the maximum EMC. Why did it just disappear? Alright. As well as the thing that has the maximum EMC. And the high will show you the top three EMCs, as well as the average. So these basically just can be used to be like, okay, cool. Are there diamonds here? You know, is there a diamond... What in the world is so powerful this way? That's a little weird. I don't know what that is. But, yeah, basically these just tell you where high EMC is. And now we have some of the fun stuff. So. First off, the Mercurial Eye. I'm going to get this out of the way. Uh, not, None of the modes work except for the Transmutation mode. And to get to work, you have to hit C. And you will open up this. You also need to hit V to charge it. And you're going to need a Klein Star of any kind. 
and a block. Now, this is weird because it'll basically transmute any blocks using um, EMC from the Klein Stars and transmute the area around it. But sometimes it won't work. Like there it did. And now it works here. But sometimes it will refuse to work. And that's a little strange. But, you know, th it, none of the other modes that through testing have worked. And it says already drained a large portion of this. So if you go into pillar, that should just build stuff. Creation. Oh, see, now it works. During testing, it didn't work. But now creation mode works, which basically is just like creative mode. Extension mode will extend. Okay, see, I said nothing works, and now it's trying to prove me wrong. Extension mode will extend it. Extension classic will extend um, differently. I am just breaking everything. And then transmutation mode turns it into stuff. And then, okay, so 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 now it works. As I'm explaining it, direct to, when I was testing this, it did nothing, and now that I'm explaining it, it does stuff. That makes no sense. But yeah, let me just say, um, it's inconsistent, but it works. So next up, we have the destruction catalyst. So what this does is it just breaks blocks, and by charging it, by charging it up, you can increase the range. It'll always break a three by three, but you can just control the range of the three by three. Oops. All right, I'm gonna be outside to. All right, I'm gonna be outside to show the next view. So the hyperkinetic lens is essentially just a projectile that deletes stuff, and it'll automatically pull everything um, to into your inventory. So, as you can see, the number of things in my inventory is increasing, and now there's a massive hole in the ground. And the catalytic lens is um, let me actually charge this up. It's basically just a more powerful version of the hyperconnect lens and destruction catalyst now if you hit r it'll also launch uh, one of the projectiles and of course i'm gonna see about this thing being charged up oh this is starting to lag oh, all right all right i'm gonna stop because i don't want to crash again but yeah now there's a hole in the ground that's nice and one last thing before we move on i forgot to mention is the repair talisman which will just repair durability on your items Crafted with some covalence dust paper. You just put it on a talisman. As long as you're nearby, it'll repair durability every second. So, now that we're on some of the more miscellaneous things, I'm going to test these first two outside. We have the Nova Catalyst and the Nova Cataclysm. And, as you can probably guess based on their appearance, yes. Yes, they are explosives. So, let's just go over here ignore that that was me testing these so so yeah now this is made with just one mobius fuel and tnt relatively easy to make and does a very quick explosion it also will do its best to put everything that it breaks into your inventory so that was that next we have the nova cataclysm which is nova catalyst with eternalist fuel and keep in mind, these detonate very, very quickly and um, do damage to you. So I would be careful, but I, I, but I also want to do this real quick because I saved doing this um, for the video so you guys could see um, an actual reaction to it. So what I want to test is if these chain with each other. Or if they will just delete each other. Because I, and I wanted to test it during the video. Just just to see what happens. So, oh. Oh, did, did they just get deleted? Oh, nope. Okay. So, they they do chain with each other. Um, oh, 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 oh. I keep, I keep thinking there's going to be something here and there's just not. So, um, word of advice. Be careful with these. You don't want to accidentally, you know, d detonate your entire base or an entire town. This is a large hole. 
Next up we have the Dark and Red Matter Furnace, and these are basically just super furnaces that can hold a lot more input, a lot more output, and smelt things very quickly. And this is without the, um, t the watch, so this could probably be buffed with the watch. Anyway, that's pretty fast. This is faster. Additionally, in the Dark Matter Furnace, you have a good chance to you can get between um, one or double the ore, so you could get either one iron or two, and here you're guaranteed to always get two. And lastly, we have the Interdiction Torch, crafted with a plus for stone, some diamonds for some torches, and glowstone. This repels nearby mobs. So, if I was to take, let's say, a creeper and a chicken, zoom, but not. <laughs> so yeah, hostile mobs, oh, but if they're standing on it, but then just give it a nudge, zoom. This is just satisfying almost. I'll have to kill all of them later, but that's going to be annoying, but that's fine. So yeah, it, it'll work with hostile mobs, and it basically just pushes them far, far away. So yeah, don't want creepers getting into your base? Just surround it with these. Simple solution, right? So, overall, the Project Emod in its current state despite a few bugs, does work, and the majority of the features work as intended. So, with a few quick bug fixes, this mod will be the true successor to Equivalent Exchange. So, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you guys want to see me use the Phosphor Stone in a Skyblock situation, then see if we can get this video to maybe 25 likes. I'm setting this really high because that video might take a while to set up and to execute. But anyways, that was the Project Emod. This has been Crafty, and goodbye!